Yes! <laughs> I stand up again. Paraplegia, the inability to move the lower parts of the body, is one of the most common causes of permanent disability. Each year, there are 500,000 new cases worldwide. For hundreds of years, crutches and wheelchairs have helped people with paralysis and lower limb impairments navigate the world. But there are still many limitations to mobility and also many negative effects on physical and mental health of long-term wheelchair use. I'm in Paris, France to find out about the wearable robots giving people who can't walk the chance to take an exciting step forward. The founders of rehabilitation company Wondercraft, Jean-Louis Constanza, Matteo Massalin and Nicholas Simon know firsthand the difficulties people with lower limb impairments face. And it was this that sparked the idea for the company. 11 years ago, my son, Oscar, uh, he's in a wheelchair because he has a genetic disease. And he asked me, Dad, you're a robotics engineer, why don't you make a robot for letting me walk? We founded the company originally with the idea of providing a solution for our families, my son and Nicolas' brother, so that we have a way, one, to decrease the, all the pathologies that go with sitting in a wheelchair all the time. And there are very, very severe pathologies, cardiovascular, urinary, digestive, you lose bone density, you have spasticity, obesity, etc. And actually you die from this pathology, so they're very bad. You have to move and walk again. And the other thing, of course, is to uh, try to restore uh, mobility for persons in wheelchairs, for all those who find the wheelchair experience limited, uh, to restore nearly everything. So we developed a robot that is capable of balancing itself by itself, with no external help. Self-balanced walk is the most difficult thing in robotics. And that's why we had to work like 10 or eight years before issuing this robot. Several prototypes were designed in that 10-year period. Today, the Atalanta X is used in hospitals to help doctors and physiotherapists retrain people to walk again after medical conditions like strokes. Dr. Stanislas Brosset is an R&D engineer. It looks like it could be straight out of a sci-fi movie. Uh, what goes into building it? In terms of mechanics, we have a robot with moving parts so, and we want to make it able to mimic all the motion of a human body because we want to make people walk again with it. So in order to do that, we need to have as many degrees of freedom as the human body. So if you look at Atalant here, you have uh, on the hip here, you have three motors, one for the frontal plane, which allows for adduction and abduction, one for the um, frontal uh, axis that allows for this motion, the rotation, and one sagittal here that allows for this motion. Then you have the knee with one motor for this flexion. And in the ankle, you have two motors that allows for the motion of the, of the ankle, which is the sagittal and the anchor motion. So this gives you an idea of the architecture of one leg of the robot uh, that has so six degrees of freedom. And we have six same well, symmetric degrees of freedom on the other leg. Having those 12 degrees of freedom on the entire robot allows for all the motion that you might want with an exoskeleton because that allows for the feet to move in every possible direction with respect to the pelvis. Just like your feet with respect to your pelvis can go in any direction, Atalant can do the same. So it's really important that this mimic the human body? Yes, absolutely. Because um, if you want people to learn how to walk again, you have to, to give them as good a motion as possible. And once you master the control of Atalant, the, those, those patients or pilots can go anywhere in the room and go pick up some objects, do some sports activities, anything is possible. I know you have a patient upstairs uh, waiting to try the exoskeleton on. Can I come and watch the session? Absolutely. Arbia is upstairs and she's going to be happy to show you what she can do with adults. Brilliant. Uh, how do we get there? Do we carry the...? Oh no, it's a walking exoskeleton. Why would we carry it? It's going to walk. <laughs> okay. It will walk itself there. Yeah. Would you mind opening the door for him? Yeah, yeah, sure. Robots first. Wondercraft has converted part of its Paris office into a specialist walk centre so people can trial an exoskeleton. 
RBAIs has been coming weekly for the past year. Cancer treatment damaged the muscles and nerves in her legs and back. Gradually, she stopped being able to walk. By the end of 2017, she relied on a wheelchair. The first time I came here, I saw the attendant. It's a great surprise. <laughs> so now? I stand up and it was absolutely marvelous for me. I wanted to cry. Yeah, no, talk to super, sound to see that. Can we watch it in action? Of course, of course. So we have some straps on the um, knees, thighs and ankles of the patient. And the patient is also tightened uh, with the um, jacket. And all of that allows for the patient to be safely and uh, comfortably set in the exoskeleton, while also making sure that it's always the skeleton of the patient that carries the weight of the patient. Well, I was going to say, it looks like a lot of effort to get into this. But how does it feel? Do you feel safe and secure? Absolutely. I feel secure, it's comfortable, and nothing hurts me. And now, Atenant is going to reposition, and out there, whenever you want, you can lean forward, and you're going to stand up. Yes. You can go. Yes. <laughs> I stand up again. <laughs> How does that feel? I feel better and um, I feel like you. I feel my body right and um, I feel again like a normal person. Okay, I'm going to turn around to the right. I'm going to turn right a little bit, forward, and turn left. Does it feel heavy as you're walking? And absolutely not. I, I just feel that I'm standing up on my feet. And before, I, I couldn't feel that. I couldn't feel my feet on the floor. And now I can again. Can I see you uh, walking with the bigger step? Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. The high-tech exoskeleton is made from lightweight materials, including aluminium and carbon fiber. Motion sensors in the feet and legs detect when it's touching the floor and where it is in respect to the rest of the world. But how exactly is it controlled? We have this uh, very nice uh, motion sensor that's magnetized on the back of the jacket that is put on the patient. And whenever the patient leans forward or backward on, on the sides, this will pick it up and translates it into uh, what is the intention of the patient. Actually, do you want to try to handle this? Yeah. Okay. So you take go. this and you, and now keep it in this direction. Okay. So this is the upright mm -hmm. position it would yeah. be in if it was on and the patient's back. See, wow. it follows what you do. Just the slightest of movements and it yeah. quickly it picks up on any motion. Mm -hmm. It's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> So lots that's gone into the control of this, but how about the, the software? Tell me about the software inside. So because it's well, a walking robot, it lives in the real world. So it's subject to the real world physics. And uh, this one has no mercy. If you make a mistake, you may fall. So it has to calculate very fast the motions to stabilize itself. The main software runs about um, 200 times per second. So every five milliseconds, we give a new input to uh, the motors. Then, in order to um, create the motions, first we start by measuring the patients. This creates a physical model of the patients that we feed into some optimization algorithms that allow us to generate trajectories for the patient. So this is fine-tuned to work with each individual person in a different way? Absolutely. Because you and I have different physiological values, so you walk in a way and I walk in a different way. So we had to translate the essence of what is walking to code, to software, so that Atalant can walk in the best possible way for each patient. A remote control allows the user or clinician to easily change between walking and modes for other movements. In the case of complete paraplegia, the exoskeleton provides all the power needed to walk. 
But in the case of people with some mobility in their legs, like Arbia, the exoskeleton can measure the forces exerted by their legs and assist with walking. Up until now, Atanat was doing everything in terms of um, yes. leg forces. And the active gait, um, Arbia will have to, to use the muscles and as much strength as she has in her leg to walk again. And um, Atanat will actually erase its own inertias and frictions so that for Arbia it will feel like walking without Atanat, yes. but Atanat will allow to make the correct motion with the leg. Okay, let's see. Sure. Yes. Show you that? Yeah, please. Yes. Each session can be made more challenging for the patient to help rebuild muscle mass as fast as possible. <laughs> I'll work. Yes, but it's good for my legs. The exoskeleton also has an exercise mode, which allows for non-walking movements. So now we're going to uh, work with the exercise mode, um, which allows for some uh, dynamic standing, in the sense that Arbia will be able to move around in the right left, forward directions, and I don't will follow all her motions. As you can see, for example, Arbia comes to touch my hand, see, and I can follow her, and go to the other side. Again, and this can be done quite fast, and she can even lean down to reach my hand and do and perform a squat, which I'm, I'm told feels really good for people who are using a wheelchair. Does it feel really good? Yes. <laughs> This uh, exercise mode is used quite a lot for um, various motions and doing different sports in, um, in the physiological centers in which it's used. Like uh, we've seen it being used for uh, tennis, mm. golfing, boxing, ping pong, um, basketball. Uh, well, many different sports are um, enabled uh, with that art. Arbia was once extremely active, traveling, playing sport, and dancing. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. The exoskeleton allows her to do things she thought were no longer possible. And it's clear to see there are huge physical and <laughs> mental benefits of these short sessions. <laughs> I have no back pain now because uh, I think that when I use Atenant, um, I was working with my muscles, uh, with my skeleton, and it helps me to, to get my body right better and I can do all the moves I want and in the future uh, I want to make um, dancing moves because in the past I was a dancer and I want to dance again. It was my passion. And I hope that in the future I can dance again with a talent. In its current form, the Atalanta X is a therapeutic and rehabilitation device it's designed to help patients relearn how to walk after a stroke and also to address the pathologies mentioned earlier that are associated with long-term wheelchair use. Pathologies such as cardiovascular, urinary and digestive problems together with poor circulation, loss of tissue and lowered bone density. It's now being used in 30 hospitals across France and has just been approved for medical use in the US. Helping those people by making them able to stand up again, walk around and interact with their friends and family gives them joy. And that's a very important thing. And since we're able to build this technology, we want to make it available to as many people as possible because um, we want to make it so that walking is considered as a right for everyone, basically. Whenever we have one person who's coming here, or in a hospital and she's standing up and staring at you and she's always crying or laughing. Of course, we cry and laugh with her uh, all the time, even if uh, it's going to be our 2000th patient this year. That excitement never leaves. No, no, you can't get uh, blasé about people standing up and walking again. Is it hard work to do that? It's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years after his first request, Oscar's dream came true last year, when with the help of the exoskeleton, he was able to walk for the first time. Work's now underway on the next generation of exoskeleton, which will be for everyday use. 
but this is still a few years away as the technology needs to be fine-tuned. Wondercraft's also looking at ways to bring the cost down so it's accessible to as many people as possible. The next step that we are developing today is the personal exoskeleton and it's already much thinner and more agile robot for personal life. So walking in the streets without falling, accessing your, you know, your bathrooms, uh, sitting for a dinner, uh, having a, you know, a coffee with friends, standing up and staring them at eye level, etc. They're doing a lot of stuff in their daily lives that people who are not in wheelchair don't have to do. And they have to think ahead for everything. I'm thinking of my son and my son is extraordinary. So they are extraordinary people and they just deserve an ordinary life. Usual startup companies pretend they're bringing extraordinary lives to ordinary people. Our job is to bring back an ordinary life to our friends in wheelchairs.